Hello everyone, this is Jason from Force Hammer Gaming, and for this video I'll be painting a Primaris Inceptor in Dark Angel's colors. So a quick note, as you can see, I'm just holding the figure here instead of it being on a base, uh, because there's actually a clear stand that attaches to this figure that I don't want to accidentally paint. So I'm just gonna hold the figure like this and you know, depending on what I'm painting, either hold it by the legs or the guns or the backpacks, we'll see. Of course, you'll see the model with the stand at the end of the video. Anyways, without further ado, let's start painting. First, we of course have to use primer on this figure. Now, previously, I used Chaos Black Primer on my Intercessor Squad, however this time I'll be using Grey Seer Primer. Now the reason that I'm using Grey Seer Primer is because when I eventually apply Dark Angel's Green Contrast Paint, the figure doesn't appear as dark versus if I use Chaos Black Primer. Next, I'm going to dry brush the armor of this figure using Caliban Green. And I'll also be using this dome tipped brush for dry brushing. However, for areas that are going to be hard to get at with the dry brush, I'm going to be using a smaller brush to get at those places. Again, just FYI, dry brushing involves dipping your brush in the paint and then wiping most of the paint off the brush. Then I'll use vertical strokes with the dry brush to paint the model. Now, we're going to dry brush Warpstone Glow on the figure, but mainly on the top parts of the model and the top parts of the armor. This is to give a gradient effect from the lighter Warpstone Glow to the darker Calban Green color. Next, we're going to use a smaller dry brush in order to highlight the edges of the figure using Moot Green. And also for areas that I have a harder time getting to, I'm just going to use a smaller brush here in order to get to those areas. Before we move on to the next step, I should note that I did some touch-ups to this figure. For example, as you might have seen, there were some areas where I got moot green where I shouldn't have. So I just painted over it with Warpstone Glow or Caliban Green depending on the area. Also, there were some places that I couldn't get to with my dry brush, particularly around the sides of the waist because of the wires being in the way here. So I just used a normal brush to add in Warpstone Glow or Caliban Green. Now for the next step, I'm going to use Dark Angel's Green, but I'm also going to dilute it with some Contrast Medium on a palette. The mixture will be two-thirds Contrast Medium and one-third Dark Angel's Green. When I painted my Intercessors, I used the Dark Angel's Green Contrast paint straight out of the bottle, but unfortunately it made details like my edge highlights a lot less visible. This mixture is intended to make the green pigment less pronounced and make details like my edge highlights more visible. As always, give these contrast paint bottles a hard shake for around 10 to 15 seconds to get all the chemicals in the bottle mixed up. Otherwise, if the chemicals are not mixed, the figure may come out way too glossy and shiny after painting. Also, be sure to spread the paint out over the surfaces as evenly as you can so it doesn't pool in one place. Thank you. 
Next, we'll be applying Corvus Black onto the gaps in the armor, the foot pad, the smooth cables that are attached to the gun, as well as the sphere-shaped joints on the jetpack, as well as on the back of the foot. Next, I'm going to be using Black Legion Contrast Paint straight out of the bottle and I'm going to use it to fill in the gaps and crevices in a couple of areas, mainly the front half of the plasma exterminator guns and the fins on the jetpack. The reason is to make them more visible when I paint corn red on the guns and lead belcher for the fins. Now we'll apply corn red onto the plasma guns. Next, we're going to apply some lead belcher onto this figure, and it's going to be going on several areas, including the fins here on the jetpack, as well as the jet engines, these less smooth cables here and on the back of the leg, the metal parts of the foot pads and the plasma gun, as well as dry brushing the edges of these sphere shaped vents here and here. Next, we're going to create a mixture that is about four-fifths contrast medium and one-fifth Black Legion contrast paint. And we're going to use this mixture to stain all the lead belcher areas in order to give it a dirty and used metal look.
Next, we're going to apply Wraith Bone onto the chest aquila, the purity seal, as well as the eyes. Next, we'll apply some Corax White onto the coils on top of the guns. We're now going to apply a coat of Skeleton Horde onto the chest aquila and the paper part of the purity seal. Next, we're going to paint the plasma coils that are on top of the gun using a mixture that is two-thirds contrast medium and one-third frost heart. And lastly, we'll be applying some Blood Angels Red Contrast Paint onto the wax part of the Purity Seal and the eyes. So here's my completed Dark Angels Primaris Inceptor figure. Overall, I think it turned out pretty decent. Um, because I used a thinned out coat of Dark Angels green contrast paint, details such as my edge highlights are a lot more visible versus my intercessors. However, I will admit this was a tougher figure to paint than I thought it would be. It's a very, for lack of a better term, busy model because of all the various parts like the cables, foot pads, jetpack fins, etc. I definitely had to do a lot more touch-up painting versus my intercessors. Going forward, if I encounter another figure as busy as this one, I might try to paint the parts separately. For example, instead of painting this Inceptor fully assembled, I might have painted the head, body, and legs as one but then I would paint the arms and jetpack separately and then glue the parts together once everything is painted. Still, I'm happy with the way this turned out and I hope you like it too. As always, constructive criticism and suggestions are appreciated. Anyways, that's the end of my video and I hope you enjoyed watching it. As always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and be sure to check out my other social media accounts in the description below. Until next time, this is Jason from Force Hammer Gaming, signing off.